pulled out his gun, shot him on the spot. And the political prisoners who witnessed this were furious and beat the security officer to death. And the soldiers chased and killed the political prisoners as if they were hunting. Hello everyone, I'm Sherry Yang. Welcome to my channel. I'm a North Korean defector living in the United States. Today in this video, I would like to share some interesting events. Many people ask me about the same question. Why North Korean people don't start a coup or uprising against the starvation or oppression? The answer is because of North Korea's strict system in the way it is structured makes it difficult and often life-threatening to think about coup or uprising. However, regardless of the reason, there may be a tipping point where if people continue to be oppressed, then they will want to rise against the dictator. And guess what? Actually, in North Korea, there were several attempts to take down the regime. The first coup, also known as Bronze Military Academy incident, was led by North Korean elite soldiers. Bronze Military Academy was the top military training institution in the Soviet Union at the time and North Korea was desperate to foster high-level military commanders. So from 1986 to 1990, North Korea selected 50 students each year and sent them to study abroad. And of course, only top high-class military soldiers were sent to study abroad. And these people were talented people who would take over the core power of North Korean military when they returned to North Korea after studying abroad. So, not surprisingly, they were so brainwashed and they were loyal to the regime. These students initially propagated the socialist superiority of North Korea to the international students from Eastern Europe. And students from Eastern Europe criticized North Korean students that North Korea is not a socialism, but a dictatorship, based on only worshipping the dictator. The more they talked with students from other countries, the more they started doubting the regime. And as they experienced, they become more and more suspicious about the socialism itself, dissatisfied with the heredity dictatorship that other countries do not have. Then 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed, and around the same time, Kim Jong-il became the supreme commander of the People's Army. And these people who were dissatisfied with the socialism also dissatisfied with the fact that their supreme commander didn't know anything about the military. He simply inherited the power because he was a son of Kim Il-sung. Therefore, they decided to conspire with the goal of reading Kim Jong-il and establish a new government. This military coup plot was a major incident involving 40 division commanders and the man who led the plot was North Korea's top top commanders, Choi ryong hes brother-in-law, Hong ge -ryong, and also he was trusted by Kim Jong-il. On the 60th anniversary of the founding of the People's Army, a large-scale military parade was planned to be held at Kim Il-sung Square. So on that day, they planned to eliminate Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il by turning the turret of the tank when they drove through the team platform where the Kim family were standing. However, the tanks that were picked to participate in this event belonged to the Capital Defense Command. Then Kim Il-sung's cousin Park Gye-sung, he objected. He claimed that this event was organized by the Ministry of the People's Armed Forces. So their tank must participate in this event. So his suggestion was accepted. Unfortunately, their force could fail like this. 
so they had to promise the following. KGB at the time were aware of the coup and informed the North Korean authorities of the fact. Then Kim Jong-il was furious and ordered to find them all and annihilate them. So this person, Won Hung Yi, was in charge of this case and began to investigate in secret. After 10 months, on February 8, 1993, the meeting was held in the conference room. Military commanders were ordered to assemble, and these people who involved the conspiracy attended as usual without noticing anything. As soon as they entered the conference room, Won Yi, who was in charge of the case, ordered to search out anti-communist side doors opened and fully armed soldiers rushed in and aimed their guns at them. And whatever Won Yi called each person's name, two soldiers approached him and took off epaulets, Kim Il-sung's badge, mirrors, and handcuffed him and dragged him away. The number of people who were called out in this meeting were 70 people. And after the meeting, another nearly 200 people from the Front Military Academy were arrested and executed, and their families were sent to political prison camp. The second coup took place in 1996 and was called the Sixth Course Incident. The Sixth Course was a course defending the northern part of North Korea, Hamgyong province. It was a defensive force located along the Chinese border with its headquarters in Ranam district in Chongjin city. And it consisted of three infantry divisions, one artillery division, and four artillery brigades. After Kim Il-sung died in 1994, and Kim Jong-il inherited the absolute power. And around the same time, North Korea's economy collapsed and all the food distribution stopped. In 1996 was the most difficult time for all North Koreans, where countless people starved to death. The sixth course committee commander thought, if we go on like this, North Korea will fall. People are suffering. Countless people died of starvation. So we would rather start a coup to eliminate Kim Jong-il and rebuild the country. However, since the sixth course was located on the northern part of North Korea, it was almost impossible to go to all the way Pyongyang to eliminate Kim Jong-il. In the jurisdiction of the sixth course, there was a hot spring villa in Gyeongsang where Kim Jong-il often visited. So they planned to get rid of Kim Jong-il when Kim Jong-il visited the hot spring villa. However, due to North Korea's unique surveillance system, where it makes it difficult to conspire more than three people, their plan was detected in advance and all conspirators were executed. And after that, there was a large scale military movement. The five course was located on the Kangwondo side, were replaced with the sixth course, and sixth course was sent to Kangwondo side. And the name of the sixth course was removed permanently, and the name of nine course was used. This incident, when I was in North Korea, people like me, who lived in the northern part of North Korea, Hamgyong province, everyone knew this incident because it was a huge scale of incident. Nearly 400 people directly involved were executed and their families and relatives were sent to political prison camp. Then instead of a coup, what about civil uprising? Was there any? There was. In May 1987, the uprising broke out in Changpyeong political prison camp where it was located on Onsong County in Hamgyong province. This uprising started because of this reason. A political prisoner working in the coal mine was beaten badly by the security officer. So he couldn't bear it, rebelled, and knocked him down. And the security officer pulled out his gun, shot him on the spot. And the political prisoners 
who witnessed this were furious and beat the security officer to death. And this spread to uprising. In order to suppress this uprising, North Korean regime sent the soldiers brutally killed political prisoners with anti-aircraft machine guns. In this Changpyeong political prison camp, gunshots rang all day and all night long, and the soldiers chased and killed political prisoners as if they were hunting. What really breaks my heart is that no one knows even if inhuman atrocities occur in North Korea. Because North Korea is a dictatorship, all information is strictly controlled, leaking inside or outside of North Korea. And the regime distorts the facts and erases the truth completely from history. So these incidents are also passed down from one person to another through word of mouth. As a result, it is inevitable that there are also different opinions. Some people say first and second coups are not military coups, but the conspiracy made by Kim Jong-il. Because Kim Jong-il, he couldn't control the military at first when he inherited the power from his father Kim Il-sung. So he made up the conspiracy to get rid of the opposed and replace them with his people. However, such claims are also stories that they've heard from someone and the truth was erased by the dictator and forever buried in the darkness. And Kim Jong-il, who knew the truth, became a mummy and he is now lying next to his father Kim Il-sung at Kumsusan Memorial Palace. Most important fact is that there were people who opposed the dictatorship and the dictator hunt them out and kill them brutally for his absolute power. North Korea is a series of vicious cycles. Even Kim Jong-un, when he inherited the power from his father Kim Jong-il, even he killed his uncle for trying to cause a coup. So today, the reason I've covered these incidents in today's video, whether it is a coup, uprising, or a conspiracy made by the dictator, one fact never changes that innocent lives have been killed. More people will be killed in the future by the dictator so that he can maintain power. In North Korea, even people are killed unfairly and a major historical incident occurred. It never records in history and the truth is gradually forgotten over time in the darkness. So I sincerely thank all of you for giving me this space to record and remember those forgotten lives. Thank you so much for supporting me to be a voice for the oppressed people in North Korea. And if you want to help me continue to do this meaningful work, please join my Patreon and support me. Thank you so much for being with me today, Then I will see you next time.